came up out of nowhere on the side of the thing. We both got spooked. I had my gun out. I didn't fire and then Nor pulled out and fired. Now on Fox 9 News at 5, video, audio, case file. The court releases most of the evidence in the Mohammed Noor trial. Hi. Um, I can hear someone out the back, and I, I'm not sure if she's having sex or being raped. Give me the address. 5024 Washburn Avenue South. Washburn Avenue South. Okay, and you said it's behind. And there's a lane the out the back. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I think she just yelled out help. For the first time, we are hearing Justine Ruschek Damon call 911 the night she was shot and killed by Minneapolis police officer Mohammed Noor. Those calls were part of some 300 exhibits recently presented to the jury that found Mohammed Noor guilty. And tonight, Fox 9's Paul Bloom takes a closer look at that evidence and shows us the roadmap prosecutors used to get a conviction. Paul, you saw this evidence weeks ago in the courtroom, some of it very sensitive. Amy and Kelsey, as we said throughout the trial, the evidence is hard to stomach, and the judge still has not yet released the most graphic of the video footage, including Damon's final agonizing moments. This evening, we've tried to take great care to share a small piece of what happened the night of July 15, 2017, that started with a pair of 911 calls from Justine Damon and ultimately ended with a Minneapolis police officer convicted of murder. I have no idea what happened. All I we heard is. Okay, With emergency life-saving efforts continuing on Justine Ruiz check Damon, body-worn camera footage capture Minneapolis police officers confused as they established a crime scene. At uh, first I thought maybe he shot somebody. He did. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh. So, so he hit the person? In the stomach. She's, really? I, think she's, I don't know what that Shut deal up. Is. Prosecutors had attacked MPD for the way it handled the initial scene in terms of gathering evidence, sharing information, need, and shutting off their cameras. Here, Sergeant Shannon Barnett, who assumed a leadership role of incident commander before the investigation was eventually turned over to the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension, spoke to Mohammed Noor's partner, Matthew Harity. She just came up out of nowhere on the side of the thing. We both got spooked. I had my gun out. I didn't fire, and then Noor pulled out and fired. Prosecutors told the jury repeatedly that in the heat of the moment, Harity never mentioned a slap or bang on their squad or that he feared for his life. Nor, meanwhile, was escorted to another vehicle, getting advice and some comfort from a senior officer along the way. You all right? Yeah. Just keep yourself, keep your mouth shut until you have to say anything. Really right. Hop in. Chop in until it ringer. Another piece of evidence that put this jury at the scene's immediate aftermath. Cell phone video shot by a teenage bicyclist pedaling through the neighborhood. What's happening, sir? Just back up for him. Just back up. You can videotape, just back up. Harity crouched down encouraging Damon to stay with him while telling Noor to remain calm and turn on his body camera as Noor paces away. Yeah, with me. It is eerily quiet at the end of that alley in the moments before officers descended and Damon was pronounced dead. An innocent, unarmed 911 caller shot to death by police outside her home. And since that trial, Justine's family settled a civil lawsuit with the city of Minneapolis for a record $20 million, nor currently in custody at the state's maximum security prison, Oak Park Heights. He will be sentenced next month. His defense attorneys have asked the court to toss out his murder and manslaughter convictions. We're live in the newsroom tonight. Paul Bloom, Fox 9.